Well, I hope the notification is out. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning, world. Good morning, Europe. Good morning, Africa, America, Asia, wherever you're watching from. Good morning. Who is going to be the first person to come on board? Well, we're welcoming first today. Elizabeth Ali, blessings. Anthony Finch, Lola Shorunke, California. All right. Here we go. Rochelle White, wow, New Zealand. Blessings. Modupe Akiola, Mashu Esson. Flair Karim Matip, Pastor Aaron, Ludovic, Ola Martin. Tita Shouse, Thank God Emerson, Priska Kawanga, Shola Anjuri, Tiger Depra, Ovie Eroto, Mayowa, good morning, Nanona Debayo, morning, 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 Aline Paradis, Emeka Onwei, Shouse Ushe, Demidenka Yuri, Jot Idowu, Lati Shoronke, Oke Udo, Paul Ojomu, Ebenezer Ariwayo, Temi Tokwe Badejo. Wow, that's my cousin, my cousin right there. Tokwe, how are you? Wow, I think I'm seeing you for the first time in my, on my program, Tokwe. How is Nigeria? How is Idomila? He's an Idomila boy just like me. The first Domila boy that is coming to no, there is another Woka day that comes. I don't know that one. I think he was not born when I was in Nigeria. But Tokwe, I know Tokwe for real. I still remember Tokwe. How is the family? Jonah Okwok. Jonah. Nikki Christian. Akin Fe Samuel. Bimbo Ato Lagbe Adamubash. Uh, Olukayo de Ekunda, right? Shioma Masese. Well, let's go. You know, it's about time for us to go look for our share button. Go look for your share button and let's go share the link. Let's go share the link immediately. As let's let's quick, quickly go and do that so that we could start our teaching as well. So I will give you one minute to go share the link. Go share this link. Then we could take off from there. We'll be ready to take off from there. All right, go share the link. Go share the link. We are in for a roller coaster right today. We are in for a ride this morning. We keep on talking about how to discover our callings and purpose. How to discover our calling and purpose. Uh, God has created you for a purpose. You are not an accident here. So let's let's keep on finding out what we are meant to be, what we are created to be. So the teaching of today is titled "Discover Your Calling Through the Eyes of Others." You know, I've given you so many keys that you could use to discover who you are and your calling. I've you know spoke, I've been talking about this topic now for a few days for, since Wednesday. And so, like, that's like four days now. And, or th yeah, three, four days. So, and this is another key I want to give you. You could actually, you know, a lot of us are busy wondering what we're called for, what we're made for, and everybody is praying to God. You see, one thing with God is this. You cannot, uh, you cannot, you cannot be forcing the hands of, of God to come from heaven to the earth to reveal to you what you could discover here by yourself on the earth. Sometimes it's laziness, I tell you that one. Sometimes it's laziness that makes us to want to just pray about some things. Because we don't want to do research. Because we don't want to do investigation. Because we don't want to, uh, you know, put in the work. Olufemi uh, Abayomi saying, where can I buy your book? Yes, we've got a book on that topic. The book is called Who, I, Who Am I? Uh, Why Am I Here? And it's on, if you are from Nigeria, the book is on Okada Books. Okada Books. Okada. Yeah, Okada Books. 
So go buy it on. I mean, you just go to into the internet and you could buy it on on uh, Okada Books. And then if you are from the West, you live in the West anywhere, then you could buy it. Uh, you could buy it from uh, Amazon. Yes, you could buy it from Amazon. Okay, I see there are some people who have their birthday today. Oluwatoyin has his birthday today. Wow. Hello, Toyin. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Oluwatoyin. Happy birthday to you. That's a guy from Cyprus. He's a great guy. He's the guy that says he's going to duplicate Pastor Sunday. So I am singing for you so that one day when your story is told, <laughs> you will be able to say, yeah, Pastor Sunday actually sang to me on my birthday one day. And, uh, and you are not the only birthday girl. There is another mentee of mine, a very good guy, that is in Cameroon, Erica. I wonder if Erica is here today. I think today is his birthday as well. So if Erica is there, uh, yeah, let's congratulate Eric as well on his own birthday. So Tony, Eric, congratulations and happy birthday to you all. Eric is going to be also Pastor Sunday in uh, in in Cameroon. Uh, there's another guy that is was writing from Fiji, Fiji Island. He said, "Oh." I want to be you pass, pastor, pray to God to make me pastor Sunday in Fiji. Then I went to his, uh, to look at his photograph, you know. You, you can't believe it. It looks just like me. <laughs> I thought it was my brother that was lost. <laughs> so we are congratulating today, Eric and Tony. By the way, to is Toye is one of my names actually. I have 12 names. You better believe it. <laughs> 12 <laughs> Got 12 names under my under my identity. <laughs> under my person. Anyway, okay, so the topic of today, you can actually discover your calling. You can actually discover your calling through the eyes of others. Discover your calling through the eyes of others. Ooh, wow, there is George Tomin here, who also has his own birthday today, and he's 18. Can you help me congratulate George as well? He's 18 today, wow, his own life is just beginning. Wow, if your life is beginning with the truth, and that you are learning from Pastor Sunday, the world surely is going to remember you. If you put this truth into practice, if you live by this truth that, uh, that we are teaching you and uh, that you are hearing from Pastor Sunday here, I bet you that one, you are going to go far in life. All right, so help me uh, congratulate George as well. Okay, he's having his 18th birthday today. He's having his 18th birthday today. Wow, a lot of birthday people today. George, Eric, and Atoyin. Amazing, amazing, amazing. All right, here we go. So, yes. Now, every one of you that is watching me today, don't forget that tonight we are having a special session and the session is the testimony period. So I'm going to bring somebody in that's going to come to tell their story of how, uh, of how they're you know, using the principles of the kingdom to actually discover themselves and to bring the kingdom of God to their world. And that is, uh, as usual, 9 o'clock Nigerian time or 7 o'clock uh, British time, Nigerian time, 7 o'clock. Uh, but uh, at 6 o'clock, at 6 o'clock, which is 8 o'clock our time, uh, we'll be having Ask Pastor Sunday. That is where we answer all questions that people might have. So if you have questions, you might want to come to that program to, to, to answer to, uh, to, to come with your questions so that we could answer your questions. Uh, so that's uh, one hour before our normal evening, evening time. All right, here we go. You know, you can actually discover your calling through the eyes of others. 
better believe it. And what the point I was trying to make is, so many times, so often, we would rather go to God, we would rather go and storm heaven to tell us that what our calling is, when to a large extent, we don't really need to. Yes, it's a good idea to, to say, okay, God made me, so God knows my calling, he knows what he made me for, yet, which is true, God knows what he created you for. But he has also given you so many um, incentives for you to discover who you are all by yourself without going extra time to disturb him <laughs> and, to, and to, you know, pull on him to begin to answer your question, what you are called to be or who you are called to become. Uh, you can do that, but it's going to take you some time. It's going to take a longer time. And that explains why a lot of people who are praying about their calling and their purpose, it takes a long time before they get revelation about it. Because only in exceptional cases, God will come down to begin to reveal to you what he has called you to do. So all those stories you hear all the time, you know, well, if you are called to become a preacher or pastor or you have some extra ministry, maybe God will actually come and, you know, give you some revelation time. Like it did for me, and but I don't think it's a compulsory thing. Uh, I, and since you know pre preachers are only one percent or two percent of Christianity, uh, ninety-eight percent of the people are not preachers anyway. And all of us have our inbuilt abilities and callings. So you have your ability, I mean your callings and your purpose in inbuilt in you, and so you need to learn how to discover that that, that calling and that purpose that God has already put inside of you. So uh, that's why you, must, you, you need the skills, you need the knowledge, you need the understanding to be able to discover who you are. And, and one of the ways that you could actually discover who you are is by noticing people around you. <laughs> you, you know, most of us, we bypass people and uh, we are trying to discover God. You, you know, sorry, you, we, are, we are bypassing people and trying to get to God. You see, you cannot get to God without getting to people. You cannot uh, discover God without discovering people. So, you know, what the point I'm trying to say, I, I, I think, I hope you'll be able to really understand this. I really pray you understand it. What I'm trying to say is this. If you live your life in such a way that you don't really care for the opinion of other people, you don't care for the opinion of people around you. You don't listen to them. You don't seek wisdom through them. You don't see God in them. You don't try to, you know, to try to inquire if God is actually talking to you already through them. So if you are not, if you are not careful enough to pay attention to people who are around you, individuals who are already in your life, who are in your environment, who have been placed there by God, you don't even notice them and you don't pay attention to them, you don't care and you kind of live as if God cannot talk to them and as if they are nobody. And then at the same time, you are looking for God everywhere, praying to God and you know, storming heaven with prayers and fasting. You know what God is going to tell you? I don't need to be a prophet. I most certainly know what God is going to tell you. God is going to let you know that, well, if you cannot pay attention to those people who are beside you right now, who are around you, who are in your world, if you don't pay attention to them, if you don't notice them, if, if you don't even see them, if you, don't, if you just bypass them, how come now you want to prove to me that I matter? You know, if people that you see on daily basis don't matter to you, I tell you what, you cannot prove to God that it matters to you. If you don't see people who are physically just in front of your eyes like this, if you don't even notice them, you don't even see them, you bypass them, how will you ever prove to God that you will see and notice him who is completely invincible? Who is completely invincible? How will you see him? So, you know, our logic sometimes might not fall in line with God's logics, you see. Because we think we are smart. Some of us, we try to be smart. 
try to be smart. You know, instead of you to just go and approach people around you and learn from them. You know what doesn't allow us to do it? What does not allow us to humble ourselves and go and learn? Well, I know it. It's called pride. It's called pride. I want to get it myself. Mm -hmm. I want to get it myself. All of us want to brag ourselves by saying, God spoke to me. He spoke to me. God revealed to me. God, God, God spoke to me directly. I am the big shot. I have a direct communication and a direct, direct line of communication with God. You know, I don't need man. Ego. Ego is, the name is ego. The word is ego. The word is ego. But you see, in most times than you could imagine, God has placed people, circumstances, situations all around you to actually speak to you and to give you and provide answers to you. At worst, he's got those answers in some libraries. Uh, in some laboratories, uh, in some places that you simply need to go and research. You say, I, 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 I like that scripture when Jesus was telling the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. And when they go to heaven, the rich man was trying to talk to the father Abraham and say, Father Abraham, I've got some relatives down there. You know, why don't you send somebody from up here? <laughs> send an angel or send Lazarus to go and preach to my relatives so that they don't come to this place, this horrible place where I am. And you know what God said? God was speaking to a part of Abraham and said, you know what? If your relatives think they are too important to listen to Moses and other prophets on the earth, if your, if your relatives are too important in their own eyes that they will not listen to ordinary servants of mine, God's servants, that are near them, well, what makes you think that if I send anybody from heaven that they are equally going to listen? No, no. I don't send anything from heaven when the answer is already on the earth. That's a lesson that we should learn. We should learn. God will not start to begin to waste his resources on the earth, I mean from heaven, when you already have the answer on the earth. So in a large, no, to a large extent, a lot of us will discover that we've been wondering what we're called to be, uh, who we are made to become, and um, what our calling and destiny is, our purpose in life is, and we do not, nothing is coming forth, and no answer. It seems as if God is silent and God is almost deaf because he's not talking to us about who we're supposed to be, what our calling is. Some of us have prayed, some of us have fasted, and we don't really get answers. And some of us, we actually claim that we have asked people. We, we, we claim that we've spoken to people. Nobody could tell us who we are supposed to, who we are supposed to be, or what our calling and our something is, our our our, our goals are. Yes, but you know, you can learn what your purpose is from people in different ways. If you just go to somebody and say, "Oh, tell me what what do you think? What's my calling?" I mean, the person is not living, he's not say, li li living his life just thinking about how to find out your purpose. He's not living his life just thinking about you. Nobody is sitting around just thinking about how to find out what your purpose is. So, you know, you've got to use wisdom. You, so, the, and that's what I want to teach us today. And uh, I want to kind of teach you how to use the people around you to discover yourself. Okay. How to use the people around you to discover your calling. That your calling actually could be discovered through the eyes of the people around you. And how do you do that? You, sometimes you need the skills, you need the wisdom to be able to actually learn how to discover who you are, your purpose, your life purpose and your life calling through those people around you. If you just go to people around you and begin to trouble them and just pull their shirts and say, oh, what do you think? What's my calling? You know, they're going to chase you away. They, 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 you become a nuisance to them. But if you have some skills 
human relationship skills, and even some wisdom. You, you could actually discover what your purpose is through people without even talking to those people. So you could discover who you are through the eyes of people without even talking to them. Amazing. And those are the skills I want to teach you today. So your calling could be discovered through the eyes of people that are around you. So number one, what are the skills? Number one, if you want to discover who you are, what your calling is, ask yourself number one question. What do people normally praise you for? especially when you are little. What are the things that people complimented you for the most? Especially when people don't have anything to gain for it. Especially when people, uh, when people are sincere. You, and you can tell when people are sincere, isn't it? We could tell when people are sincere. So if you find, just, just ask yourself. You, you don't need to talk to people especially at this point. Just Look inside yourself. Remember situations and circumstances and recollect each, you know, occurrences and instances in your life and try to ask yourself, okay, what do people compliment me for most of the time? What do people mostly compliment me for? All of us can remember. All of us can remember what we are mostly complimented for. It's true. It's true. I don't think there's any human being on earth that has never been praised for anything. I don't think there's any human being on earth that has never been complimented for anything. It's not possible. Even when people don't want to compliment you, even when people don't want to notice you, even when people don't want to give you credit, they still end up doing that. They still end up doing it. So you could use the eyes of the people around you to actually discover your gift. You could use it to discover your gift. You could use the people around you even without them knowing. If you just sit down with yourself and ask yourself a few questions, you will discover that God has been trying to talk to you. God has been trying to talk to you. God has been trying to talk to you. About yourself, about your destiny, about your calling, about your purpose. But because sometimes we are just a fool. We are just too frivolous and the triviality of, of life and vanity of life does not really make us think seriously about these kind of things. And that's why I'm saying, if you don't notice those kind of things, if you don't notice people and their compliments towards you, if you don't even remember what they compliment you for, if you don't even notice their words, if you don't even pay attention to their words, Right? How will you ever be able to distinguish the voice of God? How will you ever be able to? The voice of God is not even visible. It's not even so clear. It's not even so, you know, impecorous. I mean, you, the voice of God is like, you can hardly hear it. You don't even see God. How will you ever discern a voice like that when you cannot even discern somebody's physical presence? And his loud voice coming to you and telling you compliments about yourself. You see, you cannot know God if you don't know people. You cannot notice God if you don't notice people. You cannot discover God if you keep on bypassing people. So, you actually go find out and discover who you are, what your colleagues are, if you will listen and reflect on what people say most about you. If you will ask yourself that question, what do people mostly compliment you for? What do people mostly praise you about? You will discover that your calling and your purpose is hidden in some of those complimentary words. That your calling and your destiny is hidden in some of those words of praise. That you you, that have been spoken to your life one time or the other. One time or the other. One time or the other. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. That's one key. Next key. How do you discover your calling? Through the eyes of people that surround you or 
through the eyes of people that you come across, that God brings across you. See, God is such a wise God. He doesn't leave us without a shepherd, without caring. He doesn't leave us without, without, without attention. He doesn't leave us. He doesn't totally neglect us. God doesn't neglect people. You know, sometimes if you are so focused and too focused on yourself and on your problems and trouble and your situation and circumstances, um, you will begin to think that nobody really cares for you. Nobody really cares for you. You begin to think that, you know, you are the only one in the world that you've been abandoned and, and that you are just by yourself and, and that nobody really cares and God doesn't care and God has forgotten about you. But really, if you examine, if you really critically uh, if you take it critical th thoughts about your life, you will discover that at different points, at different points of your life, God has sent people across you. God has sent people across you. God has sent people across you. At different instances, God has sent people across you. Sometimes there might even be people you don't know. Sometimes, sometimes it might have been people that don't you know anything about you, but they might just have said something in person. They might just have complimented you about something. And that was God trying to talk to you. God has never left you. God has never forsaken you. Contrary to what we sometimes think. Contrary to what we sometimes pity ourselves about that. Oh, wow. Nobody cares. But he does care. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And the Bible says that I don't want you to be as orphans. So God has not let you be an orphan on the earth. He's always been there, showing forth and coming forward and letting you know one way or the other that he's there. Even though when nobody is there, that he's there for you. He's always been there. So if you recollect and you could picture some of the things that you have noticed about what people have said about you, you begin to see that, okay, that might be connected. That one way or the other, one time or the other, God has spoken some words that were actually pointers and directions into who and what you are supposed to be in life. Now, another thing that you need to pay attention to, uh, how to use the other people to discover who you are, what your calling is, uh, the, you know, one, one of the ways to do this is so pay attention to your childhood. Try to remember your childhood. Try to remember your childhood. You know, when you are a child, even though as a child, you know, some people will just randomly tell you things that you want to hear and make you feel good. But at the same time, at the same time, when people didn't have much to gain from you, when people didn't have to they don't have anything to gain from, from flattering you. You know, now everybody would like to flatter you for you because they don't want you to get angry. They don't want you to be offended. And so they would like to be careful and tell you what you want to hear. You know, you don't really know when people are sincere these days and when they are not because they want to just, you know, be politically correct and, you know, tell you what you want to hear. And, you know, so, but if you will remember, if you will look back into your childhood, what what are people around you saying about you? I'm not talking about the negative things. I'm not talking about the bad things. What did they compliment you for when you were a child? Look back into your childhood. That your childhood could be a key to discovering. I mean, also, when you were a child, that was before you started playing games, okay? That was before you started pretending to be who you are not, okay? <laughs> you know that. You know what I mean? Most of the time these days, we are all pretending to be who we are not. We are all playing games. But when we were smaller, we were quite original. We were quite sincere. We were who we were. Who we, were. we were ourselves. We were not playing games. We were not trying to play to the gallery. We were not trying to deceive everybody to think that we are nicer than we actually are. So at that point, what were people saying about you? Can you remember some of the things people were saying about you in your childhood? Yeah. Those things actually could hold the key into what you're supposed to be, really. They could hold the key into your calling. They could hold the key. But as, as adults, you know, people say all kinds of things. They might compliment you. They might praise you. 
But really, they might be hiding the true thoughts of what, they, what is really going on in their hearts about you. And don't blame people for that because you are just like that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are just like that too in relation to other people. Mm -hmm. Because most people see you as rivals when you are grown up. That's the evil of, 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 our li of life today. People see you as rivals. People don't, some people don't want to tell you what they really think about you. If, they are too, if, you, if some, some of those things are too good because they are thinking, if I tell her she's beautiful, would that mean she's more beautiful than me? Would that mean she's more beautiful than me? No, I don't agree she's more beautiful than me. Let me just keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if somebody tells you you are smart, they might be telling you a lie. Maybe you are not really very smart. But they want you to tell to feel good about them. <laughs> let me tell her, let me tell him he's smart so that he will think I'm his friend. <laughs> or let let me tell him he's brilliant so that at least he will know I'm not against him. <laughs> so but when you look into your childhood, when you look into your childhood, you will discover that people actually spoke more truth to you, more truthful truths to you. At those times of your growth, at that time, at that period of your growth, when you were, when you were smaller, when you were younger, and um, but as adults, unfortunately, even our relatives and our family people, they tend to correct us more than they praise us. They try to criticize us more than they compliment us, and that's the truth. The more you grow up, they're always thinking, oh, she's supposed to, this child is going to be a wife one day, she's going to be a mother one day, so let me keep on correcting, correcting, correcting. So they pile up negative things about you, and they only tell you negative, negative, negative things about you. And that, that becomes a problem. That, so that it does not happen to you too much. And, 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 you know, because that's just how life is. That's just how life is. But if you remember some of the things that were told to you when you were smaller, they could help you. That is where you could discover much more faster what people really thought about you. And through those thoughts, you could actually find out that, yes, 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 I have this. I really have this. And some of those things are the things that you are supposed to become. Well, let me tell you some other ways, that, so another point that could help you to discover who you are through the eyes of other people is... Answer the question. Even now, those people that admire you, those people that love you, ask yourself this question. Ask yourself this question. Those people that love you, those people that say they love you, admire you, those people, you know people who love you in your life. You know them. You know them. What do they love you for? What do they love you for? Ask yourself that question. You don't need to ask them. But sometimes, if you find people who are sincere, if you find people who are really sincere, okay, and you, you could actually ask them, you could actually ask them, what are the things that you've seen in me? What are the things that you really think, you, you know, are good in me? Or what, what do you love me for? What are the things you say that you love in me? You might want to ask them if, if you are sure that those kind of people will tell you the truth. If you are sure that they're not going to play to the gallery. You could ask them, really. You could ask some people about that. And then, you know, you can reach your own conclusion from it. But even without asking them any question, you ask yourself the question, what do people really love you for? That thing that they love you for? That thing that you have noticed? That thing for which they love you for, for real? Pay attention to it. Pay attention to it. Pay attention to it. That is who you are. 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 That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. But what you need to do after that is to magnify it. Is to amplify it. That's how do you um, amplify your gifts and your potential? You, you, you begin to add value to yourself. You begin to develop it. You begin to cultivate that ability, that gift. That little seed that people have noticed in you, begin to cultivate it. Begin to put energy into it. Begin to get yourself involved with self-education. 
begin to study about that subject. Try to, try to find out and learn as much as you could about that particular character trait or ability or skills that the people have noticed in you. Try to develop it. Try to know more about it. That is how you, you, you add value to yourself. And that's how you magnify and, and amplify the little seed. And that's how that seed will become a tree. And that's how tree will go out to become a forest. And that's how you come to fulfillment. That's how you come to fulfillment. Let me give you another key. How you could use the people around you to discover who you are. How you could use the people around you to discover who you are. How you could use the people around you to discover your calling. You could discover your calling just through the eyes of those people that God has placed around you. You can discover your calling through the eyes of those people God has placed around you. The next point, you might not like it too much, but it will be helpful. The next question you want to ask yourself that will help you to discover who you are to the eyes of people around you is what do people don't like me for? What are the things that people dislike in me? Maybe they dislike something. And it's not just one individual that dislikes that thing in you, but people. And maybe several times you have been told about that. And people have told you that those things, you need to work on them. Or they are not your strong point. Or maybe they are your weaknesses. Or maybe they said the things that people think you are not good in them. Well, some of those things that people dislike in you, they could go either way. It could be because those are the things that God wants you to turn God wants you to turn into your strength. That you need to work on those things because you need that thing. And God is making people to notice that and to notice that your weakness and tell you about it that this thing you are not good in this. They are criticizing you, they are criticizing you, they are criticizing you, and they don't like this about you. Maybe because God wants you to work on those things and to become better in them. You will know in your heart that this thing I need it. And you will know that you need to work and make yourself better in it. But on the other hand, it could go either way. It could be that those things that people don't like about you, those things are the things that you might want to discard. Maybe those are the things that God wants you to discard and get rid of and forget and, you know, and remove from your life. So it could be something that you don't even have any business doing. <laughs> Maybe you are, you're getting yourself involved with things that you don't have any business doing. And so, no, so people have been telling you about the fact that that thing is not your strong point and you are not good in that, maybe it's time for you to reconsider it and to quit doing those things you are doing. So things that people don't like about you, the things that people criticize and, you know, despise about you might be a pointer to who you are supposed to be and what you're supposed to confront in life. All right? Yes, yes, yes. Next point, next point, that could help you to discover through the eyes of other people who you are supposed to be is, have you ever come across envy? Have you ever come across envy? Hmm? Have you ever come across envy or jealousy? Have you ever come across envy or jealousy? Hmm? Just envy, jealousy, is that word familiar to you? Is that word familiar to you? If you have ever come across envy and jealousy, I mean, towards you, towards you, have people ever envied you, jealous you, been jealous towards, jealous towards you, envy you? Well, you need to pay attention to those things that they are, they are envying about you. You need to pay attention to those things that people are envying about you. Because... When people envy you about something, it's because you are good in it. It's because that's your strength. It's because you want to pay attention to that thing and develop it and become the best in it. And those might be the things that God wants you to develop. And those, that might be one of the things that God is challenging you to make your instrument, to make your, your, your strong point. Gaston de Levis. 
Gaston de Levy says something very interesting about envy and jealousy. Look what he says. He said, envy would normally attack the highest virtues. So people will only envy, <laughs> envy the best virtues that you have. Because envy attacks the highest virtues and spares only the mediocres. You know, they pity you. They, if they know that you are so good in something, if they tell you that you are so good, in, they see that you are so good in something, they begin to attack it and make you to think that they are your, those things are your weaknesses. They make you to think that you are bad in those things. But really, that is your, that's your strength. So when envy begins to attack your, your strongest virtues, it means that you need to do the opposite. You need to love those things more and develop those things stronger. But when they see that you are weak, what envy does? Envy pities your weakness. Envy, you know, celebrates your weakness so that you will not try to turn that weakness into strength. So that you will be comfortable in that weakness. So envy celebrates your mediocrity so that you will be deceived thinking that your mediocrity is your strength. While envy will criticize and attack your strength and your greatest virtues. Because, so that you will hate your greatest virtues. So that you will hate your strength and run away from your strength. So that's why some of those things that people do against you, they could be your key to your greatness. Some of those envy and jealousy that people show towards you, they might be the key that you need to discover who you are. So, you think it's totally bad that people envy you? Maybe not always. Maybe it's rather what you need. You think it's rather bad that people envy you? Maybe not really. Maybe God, maybe God is trying to use, you, use it to help you discover who you really are. So don't get annoyed, don't get angry at people. Let people do what they need to do. Let people attack you, let people envy you, let people, let people jealous you, but you learn from it. You make sure you learn from it. Make sure you learn from it and you take wisdom from it. So don't, 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 don't bother yourself fighting people about things. Don't bother yourself retaliating people, no. People have the right to do what they want to do about you. They will have the right to say anything they want to say about you. They will have the right to, to, you know, to be malicious against you, to be abusive against you, to spread rumors against you and about you. Let them do all they need to do. Everybody will reap, reap what they sow. So you don't bother about that. You don't need to make them reap. They will reap it automatically even without your help. But you must learn from whatever attitude people have about you or towards you. So if they envy you, you learn from it. Learn to discover that what they envy about you is your strength. And also learn to discover that what they, what, when, they try to, uh, when they try to celebrate your mediocrity, you learn what that means as well. And you, I mean, I, I'm, I'm reach your own conclusion. Reach your own conclusion. But you should know that you have your own uniqueness. And uh, you are irre irreplaceable. And you are indispensable. You are unique. You are a masterpiece. And you are here to do something that no human being can do. You are a class on your own. You are special. You are unique. And for people to say that they don't notice those things, it's not true. They notice. They notice who you are. They notice what you have. And, and even when they are criticizing you, they are still helping you if you learn to learn, if you learn to discover and to study and to analyze and to reach conclusions and to, you know, come to conclusion, yeah, and to, 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 to learn from whatever people do to you or against you. Now, let me be more, a bit more practical because some of you are Christians. Some of you are Christians. So, you know, 
people who are Christians here, they always want me to go to the Bible. They always want me to go to the Bible, you say. They always want me to go to the Bible. They say, okay, let, give me a scripture for that. <laughs> I mean, I should give you a scripture that you need other people to discover your calling. Hmm? <laughs> okay, okay, no problem, no problem. You know, um, if you look into the Bible, because if I begin to give you scriptures, there will be too many. But you, 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 you will find them. You will find them. You will find them out. Let me start with Paul, because we all read the book of the, the, the books of the Bible, the epistles. Well, let me tell you something about Paul. Let me tell you something about Paul. You know, for Paul to discover his calling, he needed Ananias. You remember that when he became blind. Even God had to send, God didn't send him to heaven or to angels. God had to send him to a man. And Ananias played a vital role in helping Paul to discover who he was. You need somebody as well. And what Paul learned from Ananias helped him to fulfill his calling. There are people around you that people has, that, that God has placed around you. God has placed around you. They might teach you. They might not teach you. But you could still learn from them. If you learn to draw those questions that I've pointed out to you, you will definitely learn from everybody that God has placed in your life. Let me give you another scriptural example of how People that God has placed in our lives play a role in us discovering who we are meant to be. You remember Esther? You remember Esther? There was, a, there, there was a great woman of God like that in the Bible, Esther. Well, she needed Mordecai, he said. She needed Mordecai. And if not for Mordecai, I am not sure she would have gone for that beauty pageant. I'm not sure she would have gone for that beauty pageant. But she listened to the uncle, she said. But thanks to Mordecai, she discovered her calling. That her calling was hidden in her beauty. Because of Mordecai, she was led into the king's chamber. People around you are a pointer to your destiny. People that God has placed around you. The circumstances where God has planted you. They are a pointer to what you are supposed to become in life. But if you are not going to learn from them, if you are not going to notice them, if you are not going to see them, and you just want to see God alone, well, I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. God will have to tell you what he told the rich man. Say, well, I don't send answers from heaven when the answers are already there on the earth. I don't. I don't. I don't do double job. God doesn't do double job, my friend. <laughs> You've got Mordecai. <laughs> You've got Ananias. <laughs> Go learn from them. Go learn from them. You want me to continue? You want me to continue? Be scriptural examples? <laughs> okay. Let's talk about another lady in the Bible. You remember Ruth? You remember Ruth? Baruf. Well, she had Naomi. <laughs> she needed Naomi to become who she, she, she became in life. You see. She needed Naomi to become who she became in life. There are Naomi's all around you. If you would just listen, if you because if you don't learn to listen to man, you cannot listen to God. If you don't learn to hear man, you cannot hear God. Samuel had Eli. Samuel had Eli. If you don't learn to distinguish the voice of Eli, as a Samuel, I'm not sure you'll be able to distinguish the voice of God. So there are some voices all around you that God has placed there. That's why pointer for you to become who you are supposed to become in life. You have Pastor Sunday coming to you right in the comfort of your home through Facebook streaming. If 
if you want, you can neglect it. Or if you want, you can learn from it. That might be a voice that God might be using to lead you into who you are supposed to become in life. <laughs> Maybe it's not by accident God is making me to do these programs. Well, another example that I could give you. The, it, the, your calling and your destiny is buried around you. And you could discover them through the eyes of those people God has already placed around you. Let's talk about Mary, the mother of Jesus. After she had an encounter with the angel, she needed a confirmation. In the natural life. And you know that that confirmation really came? The person that God has planted in her life was Elizabeth. Because when she met Elizabeth, she said something happened. She felt the baby in her responding. So God has placed people like that all around you. There are some individuals that you will see, you just say, oh, this is the kind of person I want to become. I just know it. This is the kind of person I want to become. That is your Elizabeth. That is provoking your dream. That is provoking your dream. Provoking your dream. Provoking your destiny. That is making the baby of your dream to, 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 to jump inside your spirit. There are some people that are causing your dream to jump. That your heart to shake. Your, 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 the, dream, the, the dream of your soul to begin to respond. Well... Timothy was one of the youngest and most successful pastors in the Bible. But he needed Paul. He needed Paul. Timothy needed Paul. So there are some people all around you that God has placed all around you that yeah, but God does not leave you as often. He said I will not leave you, leave you as often. God did not leave us as orphans. God did not leave us care, you know, without care, without attention, without love. So God will always surround you with people and bring people across you through whom uh, he wants to help you to discover who you are and to come to the fulfillment of the, of the purpose and calling that God has already given um, and has already planted in you. Because God has already planted those things in you. God is not giving you the, that purpose and that destiny through those people. God already planted them in you, but is using them to for you to discover them. Just like you know, God used Elijah for Elisha. Just like God used Jethro for Moses, you see. Every one of us could discover something through the people that God had planted in our lives. Saul, the king, never could have believed that you would ever become a king. Because she was running after those donkeys that were lost, you see. But in, the, in, her, in, her, in his effort of running after the donkey, he discovered a prophet, Samuel. And Samuel said, you are going to be the king of Israel, the first king of Israel. So Saul, or is it, was it Saul? Saul needed Samuel. Even David, as anointed as he was, still needed a prophet, still needed somebody. So, for you to say you just needed God directly, <laughs> and you have just been crying and praying about your dream as if it's just directly to God you need, only God you need. So, when people talk about, in churches these days, when people talk about calling and about revelation, about to discover your calling and your purpose, everybody's always talking about praying, 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 fasting, praying, fasting, praying. But if you don't notice people, you cannot notice God. If you cannot hear people that God has placed around you, I'm not sure you can hear God. Can you imagine if Joshua had not paid attention to Moses? I don't think he would have made it. Let me just tell you that one now. But he needed you. He needed him. He needed him. He needed Moses. Because he heard and listened to Moses, he became who he became. Eventually, he became who he became. He became and he became. All right. He became and he became. 
you know, maybe I should just use this opportunity to tell you a little bit about myself. Like I told you that there are some things in you that you might need other people to discover. Let me tell you my own story. Can you believe it that one of the reasons I never spoke English till I was 18, till I was 19, I never spoke English. And the only English I spoke in Nigeria before I left was when I was with my sister, with my sister-in-law. And um, she asked me, what are you planning to do after your, after your, she's English, she's uh, British. But I, so she couldn't speak Yoruba, so she was asking, what do you plan to do after your school certificate? I said, oh, I plan to go and join my brother in Russia if I win the scholarship. That was the only English language I could remember myself speaking ever for all 19 years of my life. I knew it in my head, but, you know, because I was always writing you know, to, do, to do exams, but I never spoke it. I spoke in the earlier years of my life, uh, your Egypt would and later Yoruba. But one of the things that, because of the tragedy that were happening, I was so intimidated. So when I came to university here in Russia, and I got involved with uh, the student union, I was just trying to be responsible, and started going to the student union fellowship of Nigeria, Nigeria Student Union. And um, then I began to sp speak my mind and just share my thoughts. Some people began to tell me that Sunday, young man, you speak convincingly. That you, if you vie to become a president one day, we are going to vote for you as a president. I mean, I didn't even, I was not even convinced, I never even knew I could speak. Fact, before each time, before I began to speak my thought like that, I was always saying, oh, they will not say I'm stupid and I have nobody. So, but because of the compliments of those people, because of the things they were telling me, that you are so convinced in the arguments. I began to say, hey, is it true? Oh, so I began to refine myself, to add value to myself. I never knew that was going to become the instrument that God was going to use to this, to, to do for my whole calling, that my whole calling was going to be connected with talking. I never knew I could talk. Till I was 19, I never spoke. I was so intimidated. Now, let me tell you another story about myself. You know that thing I told you that people were telling me that you could become a president? That you are so convincing? Those, same, those people never knew what they were saying. Because, I mean, as a matter of fact, up till now, I've never seen, I've never met any Nigerian overseas that came from the background, from the horrible background, and that had such a horrible story that I had. I mean, I've never seen anybody here who went to a school of, or in a village of 40 houses. I've never seen anybody here in Europe who got scholarship, like I did scholarship, not just struggle and came by himself, but who won scholarship coming from a village, from a school, a community high school that never had a, had, had a library, that never had a laboratory, and that never did math. They never had mathematics teacher, or that never had physics teacher. Never, we never that even took physics as a subject. We never even took chemistry as a subject. Chemistry, all those things are subjects. And chemistry or biology, nothing. And you are still able to win scholarship and become one of the best in, in, your, in Nigeria and in, in Europe. I've never seen a human being that has gone through that. So, because of all that, I never knew that I could command any respect. But God planted people in my way, all across me and me, to release what they had already put in me. I never knew they were there. So, you bear, if you could hear people, you could hear God. If you could hear people, you would hear God. If you could notice people and their words about you, you will. Notice God's will and purpose for your life. If you could honor people's opinion, honor their, you know, their, their, you know, pay attention to them, honor people, God will begin to let you hear his thoughts towards you through those same people. Let me tell you, reveal another secret about myself. I was 
was in high school. You know, you know, you know the kids. They used to call call me some pet names and what do you call us? Just some, yeah, but f f laughed, laughable, laugh, laugh, mock, mock names and and you know, laughing at me and calling me. And the name they called me was, I don't know if it's a, if I still remember it in Yoruba language. It's just, I think I think Itaku or something. I think Itaku. I, but maybe it's not. I can't remember now. It's been for like forty years. And that name, but I know the meaning. It's like a root, you know, short root of a of a tree, a root short, you know, like like a tuba, 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 yeah, like a yeah, you know, so short. And because I was the second shortest person in the old school, even when I was in second from four or secondary class four, I was still shorter than people in class one. So they always make put me in front of the assembly. <laughs> I will always be the one in that because they make you to stand the shortest then to the tallest. Itaku, yeah, I think maybe that's what they used to call it. I don't remember. But they used to just bully me a lot. That gave me horrible, horrible, horrible uh, low self esteem. Horrible low self esteem. Horrible, 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 horrible. So when I discovered that I needed to go abroad, I say, I normally see white people as tall. So even if in Africa, in the Domila village, I was the disgrace of the city, of the village. Even in the Domila village, as small as it is, I was this worst. Talk a lot of Nigeria, where I, 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 we were afraid of going to town, where I'm seeing real people, you know, people. And I was smallish and smallish and short. I said, why would I survive abroad? I thought people would just be bullying me. I would just be, I never knew my height was normal. And I never knew with my height I could achieve, achieve and attain anything in life. I thought I was a disgrace. I just thought I should just be hiding myself. I needed people to tell me that I was okay. I needed somebody to vindicate, to to remove that shame and say that even this my height was okay. And when I got to Europe and I discovered that I was even taller than some white people, I couldn't believe it. It restored some confidence to me. And then when I also noticed that white people don't even pay attention to that to a large extent, ah, I didn't know what my peers, my school, you know, kids could be wicked, you know. So I began to believe in myself again. And I began to pursue my dream. I never knew my height was okay. But because I was so smallish, but with the height I couldn't do anything. But the fact that I was so dry and lean, I could do something about it. I was 54 kilograms when I came to this country. When I left Nigeria, 54 kilograms. 54, that's small for a man. 54 is nothing. But I knew I could change that. So I started going to the gym. So I built my muscle up. I wanted to, I built myself to somebody I could respect. Respectable, you know, figure. So I built myself, I did sport, I made myself attractive. Because I could change that. But with the height, I couldn't do anything about it. But I never knew it was okay. I never knew it was okay. But people told me that it was okay. And I became normal. I began to, to, to embrace who I was. And to tell you another thing about myself. That I needed people to help me to fix. When I was growing up as a kid. Because the teachers were always knocking my head and say, We have never seen an Adelaide so, so so dull. And so, you know, so dull like you. So yeah, you know, so dull. And they were always beating me like this. I I used to think, my God, what kind of head did you give me? I got the right head. All my siblings and my brothers were brilliant. I'm the only one who is not brilliant. Then, being a kid, I started noticing that all the best students in my school and all around that I was seeing, and even my own family, were people that had big 
uh, forehead like this, that their hair was always you know, starting inside, you know. They all like me now. I never knew that my own was like that too. But I didn't know. I just knew that their head, they had some kind of forehead. You know, their head, they always have this place empty. And their ear always starts at the inside, like in the middle, like this, like my own. <laughs> even some of them, I had even my own more to the front, but I didn't know. So I was thinking, now this is why all the, because I was looking at myself, I thought my ear was all starting actually like here. <laughs> That's what I thought. So I was saying, if my head could be, have the shape of those kind of guys who are so smart, if the, my head could just start from inside a little bit like that, because all the smart guys always have big forehead. So, you know what I did? One day I came from jail, I was so frustrated because of the teachers beating me. I took a razor. I was living with my brother. My brother still remember. I, mean, I don't know if he remembers the story or not. I went and cut and shaved my own head to like here. And put and left it here like this. <laughs> I removed all the hair. <laughs> when I came back home, and my brother came back home from school, I mean from work, and my brother saw that my hair was all gone to the place. He said, what a disgrace. What have you done? He took, he, he beat me, he wanted to kill me that day. He beat the hair out of me. I almost died. He said, what did you do? I couldn't explain to him. He said, what did you do? Explain to me. Why did you go and remove your hair? What did, and you left all the rest of the hair and just removed this one? What are, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you trying to do? I couldn't explain to him that I want to be bright. I just want to be brilliant. I, I, you know, because all the brilliant people I'm seeing around me, all of them don't have hair. So I thought if I should remove some of my own hair, too, I would become brilliant. Ignorant. I never knew my head was okay. I never knew my head was okay. And I never knew that brilliance and genius does not have any connection with the shape of your head. <laughs> and I never knew that where your hair grows and where how drape it grows or how short it grows does not have any relevance to your brilliance. That brilliance and genius, it only comes as hard work. I did that people, only when I came here, I started saying that, ah, I see people who have, have even I had more ear in front than me and they are still brilliant. And then I saw that ah, even me, I still needed people to encourage me and let me know that I was okay. I never knew my head was okay. But this head now, everybody wants to have this kind of head. Because <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have any relation, relation, relation to who you are. But what I'm saying, the point I'm trying to make is that um, we need people. We need people. We need people. We need people to become who we, are, who we need to become. You know, I was never able, I told the story already, I was so intimidated that I could not, when, when I was in the university here, I could not go and take my food, take a tray, and then go and pick my food. I will always wait till everybody had gone before I could go and pick my food. Or I will not eat at all. Or I will take the food and go to the toilet and go and eat in the toilet. Because I was so intimidated. I couldn't even stand to let people. I, I would be looking as if thousands of eyes are on me. If you ask me, what is your name? And I stand up. But my name is... <laughs> I will have a panic attack. Just to answer what my name is. That's one of the reasons I never spoke when I was in high school. I never spoke English or anything. Because I was so intimidated because of all those kind of intimidation, all those things I was hearing in my background, what happened in the family. I was so intimidated that I couldn't even say what my name was. When you say, what's your name? I'll begin to cry. I couldn't even complete it that my name is Sunday. I, didn't like it. I couldn't talk. They would just sit down, sit down, sit down. I'll begin to, it would be as if something comes to my I'll begin to shake and, <laughs> and cry. So for me to now take a tray to go and pick a food when everybody is sitting was like suicide trip. Like a suicide mission. Until one day, God used an, a, a person, an Arab. Because the Arab was going up and down, going to take two, three, four times food.